In the words of the psalmist, all your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church. There's a wonderful quote by the writer Anton Chekhov, and it goes like this. Don't tell me the moon is shining. Show me the glint of light on broken glass. And today we enter the very book of scripture that seeks to do exactly that. After weeks of following in the footsteps of Jesus, listening to his words and seeing his followers react throughout the gospel of Mark, we are moved by our lectionary today to a very different glimpse into Jesus. This one from the gospel of John. John's gospel is so different in its nature that it's not considered to be one of what we call the synoptic gospels. They're more similar and grouped together. Consciously theological, the gospel of John takes us into deep time into which the hope of the future is made now, realized in the person of Jesus Christ. A person we know is powerful, by the miracles and the signs that we've seen performed. But as John, the writer of John knows, to be really known must be perceived and experienced at a very different level. This is Jesus who was, who is, who will be. Jesus in whom the future is made present. Yet the feeding miracle we hear today is so central to our life as Christians that it's found in all four Gospels. It's the only miracle story that that's true of. And from our roots in ancient Judaism, we know that scarcity of food was a sign of divine testing and even of punishment, while feasts and abundance a sign of God's joy and pleasure. Food is used as a metaphor for the word of God. The Psalms tell us that God's word is like honey to our tongues. And to share in it, to share in that word, means to share in God's life. Think of Abraham and Sarah, right? Who entertain three strangers who wander up into their camp only to discover that over sharing the meal, the meal itself becomes a place of a promise shared a promise between them and God, and for them, the promise of life. Think of Passover, a meal in which the first fruits of spring and the remembrance of God's liberating action merge to produce a central narrative in our faith story, a meal we are told Jesus was commemorating when he lifted the bread and blessed it and broke it and shared it with a command for us to do so in remembrance of him on the very night that he was arrested. In these meals, we remember that not only does God give life, but God liberates life. In the sharing of bread together, we are brought physically into the knowing that we are participating in God's life, that we are marking a promise given to us by God, and that all of our life comes from God. In our gospel today, Jesus looks out at the masses who've come, drawn to see him because of his miracles. And when his disciples have no response to a question of how the hungry might be fed, he takes charge, doesn't he? He gathers the bread and the fish. He blesses it and he breaks it. And he literally feeds the people himself. Finally, they gather up the remains of this simple meal with the abundance overflowing 12 baskets. A good reminder to all of us that the careful calculations we so value in our earthly lives ignore the one who redefines what is possible. The first century Didache, our earliest church catechism from the first century, incorporates this scripture into one of the earliest known Eucharistic prayers. 
It reads like this. As this broken bread was once scattered on the mountain, and after it had been brought together, it became one. So may the church be gathered together from the ends of the earth unto thy kingdom. Given the depth of the history in our understanding of ourselves as followers of Christ, our people who gather to bless and break bread in his memory, imagine the dilemma faced by our bishops at the beginning of the pandemic. When COVID prevented us from gathering together to pray these Eucharistic prayers and to break that bread together, imagine the number of conversations that were going on as everyone asked, what now? Some suggested that perhaps the blessing, we could hold up bread at home and over Zoom, the blessing could be said over that bread. Others suggested that perhaps a priest could come in and buy themselves blessed bread and then it could be packaged and given out and sent home to others. But after much reflection on scripture and tradition and the theology that comes from all of that together, we were reminded by those same bishops that the bread becomes a sacred meal when it is blessed and consumed by the community gathered in Jesus' name. In fact, the first act, the opening note of the Eucharist is when we put our hand on that door handle and turn it and walk into a space and gather there together. It is when we gather as the community did on the hillside and ask to be fed that the Eucharist begins. And as we offer in that service back to God, the gifts of flour and grape turned into bread and wine, as we offer up ourselves, right? Our hearts, our lives, we are given that deeper food that is Jesus, that eternal and holy food. We are taken in, in the midst of this gathering, in the midst of a community of believers. Lutheran liturgist Gail Ramshaw says that in gathering to share the Eucharist, we acknowledge that the food comes not to me, but to us. And so equipped, we are able to be part of the messianic promise that all the hungry of the world must be fed, charging and empowering the church to reach out to feed others and to send food to those who are not at this table. For in sharing the bread with each other and with the world around us, we experience the Trinity, God the creator, Christ the food we share, and the spirit alive in community. Even a community reimagined as we do today, incorporating all those who join us online. The feeding we share together in our hearts at a Eucharist sends us into the world to feed, to feed them, grateful so that we might give thanks and humbled so that we might serve. So the glimmer of the moon's reflection that catches the eye here in John, the knowledge that the journey to wisdom is a long one, that miracles are but signs along the way for those who are looking and that nothing is outside the scope of the divine to accomplish and to accomplish through us. We who have been fed by the great shepherd, we who are loved, we who are grateful. Amen.